In the real world, thousands of species are on the brink of extinction. But what about in Minecraft? <laughs> Simply put, a species is considered endangered when it's at risk of going extinct in the near future, whether it's a plant, animal, fungus, or even a tiny bug. In the last few decades, species are disappearing faster than at any point in modern history, mostly thanks to habitat destruction, climate change, and overexploitation. Now, luckily Minecraft doesn't have humans bulldozing forests or polluting oceans, unless you're that guy. But if it did have real-world pressures, some mobs would absolutely be endangered. There are a few main reasons species go endangered, the first being habitat loss. When an ecosystem is destroyed or changed, animals lose their homes. This can happen naturally, like when an asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs, or from human activity, like deforestation for farming or cities. For example, around 20% of the Amazon rainforest has been cleared in just 50 years. That doesn't just remove trees, it removes entire ecosystems that thousands of species rely on. It's not just direct loss either. Some species are habitats, like trees that shelter birds and insects. If you remove the trees, the species depending on them go too. In Minecraft, we can imagine similar impacts. If a mob only spawns in a very specific area, like frogs and swamps, and that biome were destroyed or fragmented, that species would be vulnerable. Mobs with small geographic ranges or that live in only one biome would be hit the hardest. On the flip side, generalist species like Endermen, which appear in all three dimensions, would be way more resilient. The next major factor contributing to species endangerment is loss of genetic variation. Genetic variation is why sheep in Minecraft can be white, black, brown, or pink. In real life, more variation means better chances of adapting to change. Smaller populations usually have less genetic diversity, which makes them more vulnerable to disease, environmental shifts, or just bad luck. And overexploitation, like overhunting, can shrink population size really fast. But anyways, how is species risk measured? In real life, scientists use criteria set by the IUCN Red List to classify how endangered a species is. The details can get a little technical, but the big red flags are a declining population, a small geographic range, and very few mature individuals. To analyze this in-game, we need to tweak how we look at mobs. Minecraft tends to represent entire groups of real-life animals with a single mob. One good example is bees. In real life, we have over 20,000 species of bees. For this video, we're just going to treat each mob as its own species and treat biome specific variants like wolves that vary by biome as distinct species or subspecies. On the other hand, if the differences are just color, like sheep, that's just going to be genetic variation within a single species. And even though Minecraft has an infinite world, we'll pretend it doesn't, because otherwise, no mob would ever be truly at risk. First, let's address the mobs that, if we're using real-world ecology terms, are either extinct or extinct in the wild. In conservation biology, extinct means no individuals are left alive anywhere. Extinct in the wild means a species only survives in captivity or artificial environments with no natural populations remaining. First up, the giant zombie. You've probably seen them in creative mode or with commands, but in survival, they don't exist. No biome lists them in the spawn code so they can never appear naturally. They might represent an ancient relative or primitive zombie form, especially since they can't convert into drowned when submerged. Maybe they roamed prehistoric, now lost biomes, but today, they're completely wiped out. This is true extinction. Zombie horses are a similar case. They don't spawn naturally. You can summon them with commands, but there's no evidence of them in the wild. Since regular skeleton horses do spawn under certain conditions, it's possible the zombie variant was an evolutionary dead end, maybe wiped out by some environmental shift. Either way, they're gone. The wither is a bit trickier. They can be summoned, but only by players using soul sand and wither skulls. No natural biome conditions will spawn them. That suggests that their natural habitat or environmental niche is long gone. So at one point, maybe the overworld had conditions that allowed withers to emerge on their own, but not anymore. They're like the Minecraft version of species that only survive in captivity or labs. Technically alive, but only with human intervention. 
Before recent updates, camels only spawned in desert villages, suggesting they'd been fully domesticated by villagers with no known wild population. That fits the textbook definition of extinct in the wild. This is also the case with iron golems. However, newer updates expanded their spawning range, rewilding the species. That's a conservation win. Sniffers are also only brought back through player action, specifically by hatching eggs found in suspicious sand. But here's the twist. Those eggs do appear naturally, which raises the question, are sniffers extinct or just really, really elusive? It's possible they're not extinct, but are instead what we call cryptic species. Animals that are so shy, rare, or behaviorally hidden that we rarely see them. Their original populations may have collapsed, but some form of reproduction is still possible. So let's call them possibly extinct in the wild, pending further research. Now moving on to the naturally spawning species. Axolotls spawn only in a very specific environment, underwater in lush caves around clay blocks. Species like this that are adapted to life in cave systems are known as troglobites, and they're often endemic, meaning they only exist in that one location. This makes them extremely vulnerable to disturbance. Real-life axolotls are critically endangered, with estimates of only 50 to 1,000 left in the wild. The threats they face aren't too different from those in game, collection for pet trade, and habitat destruction. The blue axolotl is extremely rare, but only obtainable through breeding, so I just consider it a genetic mutation. Glow squid live in deep, dark waters, either underground or in oceans. Like the axolotl, they're dependent on very specific conditions, and that puts them at risk. Their populations spawn in groups of four to six, so they're not critically endangered yet. But mining, ocean draining, and players constantly hunting them for glowing sacks could cause trouble long term. In the real world, deep sea and cave dwelling creatures tend to have pretty poor resilience, so we'll file the glow squid under vulnerable with potential for escalation. Mushrooms are one of Minecraft's rarest and most geographically restricted mobs. They only spawn on mushroom islands, which are isolated landmasses found deep in oceans and covered in mycelium. These islands are the only places mushrooms and mycelium exist. Nowhere else in the Minecraft world supports them. This makes mushrooms a great example of island endemic species likely the result of allopatric speciation from regular cows. In real life, this happens when populations get isolated on islands and evolve separately, like the species on Socotra Island off the coast of Yemen, which may have been an inspiration for the biome. No. In-game, mushrooms benefit from one major advantage. Hostile mobs can't spawn on mushroom islands. No predators equals peaceful life. But ironically, that also means they're more vulnerable, because they never evolve defenses. And since the islands are monster-free, they're the perfect spot to build a base. So if players show up, the mushrooms don't stand a chance. Their tiny habitat range, high specialization, and potential human disruption make them critically endangered. Snowy wolves are one of Minecraft's lesser-known recent mob variants. They only spawn in snowy groves a pretty rare biome on the sides of tall mountains. Unlike regular wolves, they don't spawn in large packs either, and their population is scattered across fragmented, disjunct, montane habitats. This makes their survival difficult, and small populations often suffer from inbreeding, leading to a drop in genetic diversity. This is exactly the kind of scenario that puts real-world animals, like elephants, on the brink. While they may not be globally critically endangered, their small population size, low reproduction, and fragmented range make them a solid case for being endangered. Let's also get this one out of the way. I don't consider pink sheep to be a separate species. They're just a rare genetic mutation of regular sheep, the Minecraft version of a naturally occurring color morph. Not endangered at all, but still cool. Pandas in Minecraft mirror their real-world counterparts low reproduction, specific diet, and limited habitat. They spawn in jungles and are a bit more common in bamboo jungles. 
which is logical because bamboo is basically all they eat. In real life, giant pandas were swapped from endangered to vulnerable, but they're still not totally safe. Minecraft pandas face similar pressures. Players clearing bamboo forests for resources can easily wipe out their habitat. But what about the brown panda variant? They're based on the Chinling panda, a rare subspecies found only in a specific mountain range in China. Minecraft didn't geographically isolate them though, which is a missed opportunity. So I'm just treating brown pandas as genetic variation, not a separate endangered species. Next up, Elder Guardians are the boss mobs of ocean monuments. And unlike their guardian minions, they don't respawn. That means every Elder Guardian you kill is gone forever. Shulkers also don't respawn, and only live in rare end cities. They're also the only source of highly sought after shulker shells. With no natural population recovery, both are highly vulnerable to overhunting, especially since players are incentivized to kill them for loot. If this were real life, they'd be endangered. Finally, let's talk about Minecraft's most iconic and tragic case. The Ender Dragon. This massive mob only exists in one place, the Central End Island, and is the last known mature individual of its species. It's already functionally extinct in the wild. Unless it's capable of asexual reproduction, players are not only encouraged to kill it and extinct the species, but the game rewards them for doing so. Their only hope is the dragon egg, which may allow artificial propagation. Between its tiny habitat, huge body size, which is often correlated with extinction risk, and the direct incentive to hunt it, the Ender Dragon is the most endangered mob in the entire game. I wasn't sure how to categorize snow golems, so let me know what you think, and if there are other mobs you think deserve a protection status. At the end of the day, Minecraft might be fictional, but extinction isn't.